It's been a great week for Woody Allen. His musical, Bullets Over Broadway, picked up an impressive six Tony nominations on Tuesday. And tomorrow, Allen makes a star turn as Fading Gigolo hits theaters. The film is already enjoying rave reviews, but accusations that Allen sexually abused his daughter, Dylan Farrow, continue to plague him and may now be a liability. WGBH News Arts Editor Jared Bowen joins me now with more. So you were a little uncomfortable watching this. Well, here's the deal. Why Woody Allen would choose to star in a movie where he plays a gigolo, something that has obviously huge sexual connotations, is just beyond me at this point. I mean, the, the movie itself is fantastic, and it's one of the few examples where Woody Allen is starring in the movie, not directing. It's directed by and written by John Turturro, and it's about a man uh, who's a little bit older, Murray, played by Woody Allen, who starts to pimp out this younger man. And in the end, it's a film about connections. You know, sex may be the entree, but it's, it's really about the levels of relationship and loneliness and how we get at them. And here's a little clip from the film. You need a young, slick, leading man type. This is exactly my point. I am not a beautiful man. Um, did I say you were beautiful? But you have a different quality. You have a certain kind of sex appeal. Thank is, you. Mick, is Mick Jagger a beautiful man? The guy who opens his mouth to sing, it, it's a, a horror. But he's hot. Mick is hot. And that's what you have. Mm. <laughs> Is there any humor? It, no, it, it, it's a very well-made mm -hmm. film. It's a, it's a Woody Allen film without being Woody Allen, but it, the problem is I think we've arrived at the point now where it's difficult to see Woody Allen on screen without being reminded constantly of, of what may very well have happened. Nothing's confirmed, of course, but it's a liability, I think. I'm with you. I haven't seen a Woody Allen film. Well, let's bring Ty Burr into discussion. He's a Boston Globe film critic. Hi. Author of the book, um, Gods Like Us. Thank you very much. Um, I couldn't agree less. Um, <laughs> surprise, surprise. Surprise, surprise. First of all, this is not a Woody Allen movie. This is a John Turturro movie. But he it is a no, 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 no. Let me finish. He wrote it. He directed it. He stars in it. He is the fading gigolo. He's not. And you, you said Woody Allen's the gigolo. Woody Allen. It's in a comic turn. It's absurd that this, you know, this retired bookstore owner could be a pimp. That's the joke of it. Um, second of all. We don't know what happened. It's not like Roman Polanski where he was convicted in a court. We, uh, he, Dylan Farrow says one thing. Uh, Mia Farrow says one thing. Woody Allen says another thing. Um, the, the other son has come to Woody Allen's defense saying that oh, none we, of this happened. He, he we, my point is, we don't know. We, should, we do know. We know. We know he married Sunny. No, you Sunny. don't. We, we know he but that's a separate Sunny. thing. That has nothing to do no, with, with sexually molesting a, a seven-year-old girl. Sexually molesting. He, 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 he married he married Mia somebody Farrow's who was, who was living yeah. in a situation as if it was a stepdaughter. We don't know. My point is we don't know. So therefore, it's up to every individual moviegoer. If you feel uncomfortable, watching Woody Allen in any movie, don't go see his movies. I saw this movie in September at the Toronto Film Festival before any of this latest uproar happened, and I was totally charmed by it. Again, it's a John Turturro film. It's really not a Woody Allen film. I watched it again last week, and I was charmed by it again. Um, and and I'm, I'm not questioning the fact that it's a charming movie and it's a well-made movie. And I, I say it's a Woody Allen movie in terms of feel. It's set in New York. It has the jazz music. It has Woody Allen. I, I said that John mm -hmm. Turturro made the film. But I think there is so much swarming around Woody Allen now, including the fact that, yes, we know that the, he discovered there were pictures of his daughter, essentially, even though she was not a biological daughter or adopted daughter right. of Sunni Prevost. I'm not going to defend that. Pictures, Although she was of age. And suddenly all of these accusations. Yeah. Come about as somebody who married what his that's daughter. Worth. That I think, you know, from a business standpoint, not unlike Mel Gibson and other people before him, it becomes a liability because there's so much that you're carrying to this film now. That's part of the discussion that we're having. Is it, is it possible to have uh, a Woody Allen film in terms of whether he's starring or directed without having these conversations become part of the public dialogue? At this I'd point? rather they look at the individual films. I blow hot and cold on Woody Allen films. I think so, some of his stuff is good. Some of it, he's made some terrible movies. Um, are you going to go see the new X Men movie? What, what, what's your point? My point no, is that Gibson? Brian Singer, the director, oh. has been accused of drugging and raping well, underage boys, what think, along with three other men, in a court, case that's going to court. So, are you going to go? Are you uncomfortable seeing the X Men movie? I, Maybe. <laughs> uncomfortable with his history, and I and I you know I had this debate with myself with Blue Jasmine because you don't see Woody Allen. I think the difference here is that you're reminded of it, and, and the fact that he would play somebody who is pimping somebody out. It, it, well, it's to, a joke. To, to but die, you're but, uncomfortable but, 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 with anything I, sexual. I, in I, he's flaunting it in a sense, and I think that's part of what Jared is saying. It's, it's, it's almost like he's taunting and flaunting at the same. Why time. does he? Why can't he flaunt it if he didn't do something? 
Well, he's 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 begging, mean, you, to words, to, he's begging other words, you to come to that I'm conclusion. I'm saying, well, I'm saying we carry so much in our heads about this. We don't know what happened. It's up to your you. If you don't want to go see it, don't go see it. But I am a little leery of this uh, sort of crucifixion that's going. Of the mobs coming with torches about some, a situation we do not know what happened. If you want to say, oh, I know, or oh, I feel really uncomfortable, by all means, don't give them your money. Don't go see the movie. Mm -hmm. um, too bad for John Turturro because he made a good movie. I should have picked a different star. All right. I think that would have helped a lot. <laughs> So a little bit of news today, Jared. Yeah, unfortunately, um, it, it's, it's it's a bit of sad news. Nikki Martin, who was a longtime artistic director of the mm -hmm. Huntington Theater Company from 2000 to 2008 before going on to mm -hmm. lead the Williamstown Theater Festival, passed away yesterday. We just learned that today. And, and Nikki Martin is really somebody who changed the shape of theater in Boston in so many ways. First of all, he brought in so many great names, Andrea Martin, Nathan Lane, Victor Garber, uh, Kate Burton, with whom yeah. he worked frequently. Uh, and they just had this wonderful partnership. He's also somebody who brought more local actors to the stage in, in Boston when it was these very professional productions and sent a lot of shows mm. off to Broadway. He was supposed to direct a show here uh, this coming theater senior, se season, Vanya, Sonia, Masha, and Spike, which I saw on Broadway last year. His last show, so hilarious. Mm. Such a talent and such a loss. Too bad. I know he was a big deal in town. All right. Jared Bowen, Ty Burr, thanks for that thanks. lively discussion. <laughs>